All right, welcome back. And we are now here with our resident sexologist, Dr. Limor Blockman, here to talk about maintenance sex, which kind of <laughs> sounds like a term you use when relating to diets, not sex, I know. right? I As soon as you said it, you looked like, maintenance oh, I don't sex, like, like What, this. like eyebrow maintenance, <laughs> diet maintenance? Like, I know. What I, I, you can assume terrible. what it means, but yeah. tell us what it means exactly. Well, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm going to relate to exactly what it means, but I'm going to start and say that what, for this purpose, they gathered 63 adults in a steady relationship, long-term relationship, doesn't matter if they're married or not, between the ages of 18 to 45. And they took this study and, and prolonged it over six weeks and examined, uh, I'm sorry, three weeks and examined how often did they have sex and if they had the sex they were having was something of compliance or actually desire. Wow. So, compliance yeah. is a very PC word, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> compliance, yes, that's what they examined. And they found out that within these three weeks, uh, they had sex between six and ten times. It's not so little, I would say. That's normal, like that's kind once of or normal. twice a week? Yeah, that was kind of normal, but close to 20 to 30 percent of it was compliance. They weren't really interested. In other words, they could have just mowed the lawn or did the dishes, it would have been the yeah. same. So the question is really, you know, when you think about it, is having sex without desire, is it something good, is it beneficial, is it something that we should do? And it's always, it's always something that comes to mind, people think about it, oh, I'm going to wait until I have this desire, I have this need, is it really a good thing? So I want to start and say that Masters and Johnson, the, the big researchers, mm -hmm. uh, came up with sexual response cycle that came to, uh, first of all, uh, arousal, which is equivalent to desire, then we have plateau, which is increased tension of muscles and everything, then we have the orgasm, the climax, and then the resolution. So the, the, the actual stages are there, but the question is desire, which is equals to, uh, which equals arousal, if it's not there, is it okay to have sex? Right. I think that it is, definitely as a professional and on a personal level, but there are many uh, things that, that you have to put an, into account when you look at it. So right. I want to say that sex is, and intimacy is important, of course, and it does differentiate this from other relationships that we have. So it is something to maintain and keep in mind that you have to do because we come to a place where we don't pay attention and all of a sudden like a month goes by and we didn't have sex, we didn't really touch sexually or intimately. And that is a problem. Secondly, we can't really expect libidos to be equal between men and women to begin with, yeah. gender-wise. And then also, you know, just husbands and wives or partners long-term, they have different things that occupy them. You don't really know, you know, if something... So, like, what, I mean, I guess this is kind of more, I mean, are we talking more about usually women with their husbands? Very like, because husband. obviously, you know... Very good question. Guys are visual, they don't need a lot to, you know, like is it a lot of times like women are just like fine, you know, the guy's in the mood and I might as well just do it so I can finish doing Watching the other the, things like I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> do some is that shopping. just a main difference between Martians and Venetians? There is, it's, very, it's a very good question because in this study and other studies as well, they showed to 25 to 35 percent were compliance by the, the male side. Wow. So actually the <laughs> men were, you know, jumping in to satisfy their wives as well. So it's not only, you know, not only not the wives are, yeah, and it is very interesting. And I want to say that appetite comes with eating. So sometimes when we start playing around and touching each other, it creates some form of environment that actually makes us interested. And we mm -hmm. should take, take it into account and not completely say, oh no, I'm not in the mood. Now I'm not saying that if you're feeling uncomfortable, you have a headache, <laughs> the usual yeah. uh, solution. But it's also kind get. of a matter of like, you're in a rush. Yeah. You know, it's like what, I mean, I would imagine a way to not have it be maintenance is at least taking some time to get in the mood rather than, okay, we have five minutes before the kids wake oh, up. Oh, of course, you know? of course. I, you should find time for it, but I want to say that even uh, uh, research-wise, psychologist uh, David Buss found that there are over 200 reasons that people say uh, that, that they want to have sex. And he divided it into two categories. Mm -hmm. One was approval goals and the other one was avoidance goals. Approval goals, of course, we all know that everybody, um, yeah. I want to satisfy my partner. If you do it for these reasons, you always have better time and you're more sexual. And brownie and more... points because then you're not going to fight because the guy will know, be happy. And you know, use it or lose it. That's the main thing. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. All right.